Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Today is December 18, 2018. First and foremost, we cannot and should not be dogmatic about some particular day as it pertains to the rapture. We're always looking at what we believe, or we should always be looking at what we believe is the next most likely date based on our current situation. Secondly, we're not looking at numbers to predict any future event. We already know that the rapture is close. We already know that. The question is whether God is supremely sovereign over the created order and whether he teases us by dangling uh, numbers or events in front of us. He certainly doesn't do it to confirm some specific date and Satan has no interest in keeping us watchful and awake. So having said that, now that we are fastly approaching the conclusion to 2018, coming to the end of 2018, and the 70-year span from 1948 when Israel became a nation again, winter solstice could be a date to be aware of as it regards our departure. It could be, but I'm not going to say any, you know, anything uh, dogmatic. I'm not going to be dogmatic about it. But there are some interesting factors that we, I believe, that we can look at, that we have been looking at. If we go past December 21, then I don't see anything left in 2018 that would give us any indication. If you've watched any of uh, our videos here recently about uh, thinking outside the box and the end of 5778, how the, it, this, this could all be according to God's uh, way of thinking, his calendar, it could be have not be so specific about 2018 not as much about 2018 as 5778 which ends March 8th so if we go past uh, the first of the year don't get discouraged we're still in 5778 that's that's what I'm trying to say so I see nothing left in 2018 after this uh, one particular uh, date and our event um, seasonal event which is it's always been uh, of some uh, significance winter solstice december 21. now I've, I've always believed in numbers you all know that uh, math plays a significant role in all of this um, including pi uh, god's the great mathematician uh, there's a difference between uh, the occult and its use of numbers and the Bible's use of numbers when we draw that distinction uh, we see clearly that we're okay with this this is not we're not delving into black magic or anything like that uh, this is strictly biblical numer numerology and they actually give courses on that in Bible college so I ask you to consider the following uh, we're gonna do some just a little bit of review here of some basic numbers or the numbers 1 through 10 taken from the Hebrew alphabet alone the numbers in the Bible they tell a, a prophetic story and each Hebrew number has a meaning and we know that the number one consists of a single Hebrew letter Aleph meaning the head of an ox and it is the animal used for sacrifice now unlike many others who view the first number as having to do with Israel uh, because of uh, sacrifice. I view the number one as having a relationship to God himself, one God, and particularly our Savior, uh, who is in whom uh, all the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. So that's how I view number one. The number two, it consists of a single letter, Beth, meaning a house or a tent. And since it follows the number one, I view the number two as primarily God having come in the flesh in whom all the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. Psalm 2 predicts that God will set my king upon my holy hill of Zion as a reference to the house of the Lord. The number three consists of a, of a single Hebrew letter, uh, Gamel, meaning a camel. Its shape looks like the neck of a camel. Psalm 3, 3 calls the Lord a lifter up of mine head. I see three as primarily representing the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. 
The number four consists of a single Hebrew letter, daleth, meaning a foot. Psalm 4.4 4 says, stand in awe and sin not. And most of us are aware of the fact that the number five consists of a single Hebrew letter, uh, meaning a lattice, a window. The implication uh, being to look out and away from where we are, from the inside to the outside, to the bigger picture of everything that surrounds us. Life itself. Symbolically, five stands for grace in the Word of God. And the number six consists of a single letter, vav, meaning a nail or a hook. Six primarily represents man. Our Savior was fully man as well as God and was nailed to a cross for our sins. And the number seven consists of a single letter, zang, meaning a weapon. Psalm 7, 12, and 13 plainly refers to God's weapons. He will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. So seven is seen to have actually have a direct connection to his coming in deliverance for his people and judgment. Seven is the number of completeness and perfection, both physical and spiritual. It derives much of its meaning from being tied directly to God's creation of all things. And we're going to zero in on the number seven in this video just a little bit here. The number eight consists of a single Hebrew letter, uh, cheth, meaning a hedge or a fence. Now perhaps it has a reference to the shepherd's protection of his flock. Uh, Christian theologians have suggested that the number eight uh, is really the number of new beginnings. I believe that. It makes sense since it follows seven. Uh, God created in six days, rested on the seventh, and the following day starts the whole uh, uh, sequence all over again. The number nine consists of a single letter, teth, meaning a serpent, something rolled or twisted together. Uh, it's a number for the Antichrist. It is not the number for the Antichrist. It is a number for uh, the Antichrist. However, Psalm 9 certainly refers to the Antichrist. As verse 6 says, O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. Also, verse 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God, which is a reference to Armageddon and Christ's judgment that is coming. And 10 is God's number of ordinal perfection. The number 11 is made up of two Hebrew letters, Yod and Aleph. Their combined meaning being to desire or to long. 12 is God's number of governmental perfection. 11 adds or takes away from God's perfection, 10. 12 marks the, the perfection of divine government. 11 falls short of it, so it's the number which marks disorder, disorganization, imperfection, and disintegration. 9, 11, and 13 are not what we would call good numbers. Even the term, the 11th hour, carries with it the connotation of impending doom. The Germans averted catastrophe by signing an agreement and ending the war on November 11. At 11 a.m., the 11th month, the 11th day, and the 11th hour. And take note of the fact that here we actually have a significant number associated with a, a, an, an historic event of great magnitude. I mean, God deals in numbers. 12 is a perfect number which denotes God's perfection in his design of this world. 3 denotes divine perfection. 7 denotes spiritual perfection, 10 denotes ordinal perfection, and 12 denotes governmental perfection. 12 divisions of the heavens that govern the night, 12 months that govern the year, 12 tribes of God's chosen people, 12 disciples chosen by Jesus. Uh, the New Jerusalem is 12,000 furlongs in length, breadth, and height, and someday God will choose a group of 144,000 Jews. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. God deals with numbers. The number 13 is made up of two Hebrew letters, Yod and Gimel. 13 is a number of ill omen. In the Bible, every occurrence of the number 13 and its multiples are connected with 
rebellion, apostasy, defection, corruption, disintegration, or revolution. And it, it is because the world is aware of this biblical number association that superstition is associated with 13, not the other way around. It was in the 13th year that Sodom rebelled against its overlords and was carried into captivity, and so it is throughout the Bible. Thus, there's grown up a variety of superstitions. That is why some buildings have no 13th floor, and some airlines used to have no 13th row of seats, etc., etc. Even the word for Satan in Hebrew has a numerical value of 2197. We get, uh, we get that number, 2197, by multiplying 13 times 13 times 13. These are not coincidences. They're not coincidences, and neither is the following. Seven is the number of completeness and perfection. It's tied directly to God's creation of all things. Created is used seven times describing God's creative work, seven days in a week, and God's Sabbath is on the seventh day. The Bible was divided into seven major divisions, the Law, the Prophets, the Writings, or, or Psalms, the Gospels, and Acts, the General Epistles, the Epistles of Paul, and the Book of Revelation. The total number of originally inspired books was 49, that's 7 times 7, demonstrating the absolute perfection of the Word of God. The writer of Hebrews uses seven titles to refer to Christ, heir of all things, captain of our salvation, apostle, author of salvation, forerunner, high priest, and the author and finisher of our faith. In Matthew 13, Jesus is quoted as giving seven parables. Seven psalms are ascribed to David in the New Testament. In Revelation, there are seven churches, seven angels, to the seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpet plagues, seven thunders, and the seven last plagues. There are seven annual holy days, beginning with Passover and ending with the Feast of Tabernacles. We also read about 70 elders, 70 disciples sent out, 70 years in captivity, 70 Sabbaths, 70 sevens, 70 is the age of having a child, 70 nations, as the Jews consider that all nations, 70 generation without strength, 70 years Israel, 1948 to 2018, 70 years of age, Trump is president, uh, multiple seven connections to Trump, an amazing number of connections there. Looking at 777, everything that you see on the screen here uh, has a numerical value of 777, that delighteth greatly in his commandments, that they might be called trees of righteousness and planting of the Lord, his soul an offering for sin, 70 years, yeah, even the phrase 70 years in Hebrew is 777, God, heaven, and earth, in the firmament of heaven, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and Israel, mine elect, the way of wisdom, my doctrine shall drop as the rain, they hear the words of thy mouth, thou fillest, and freed man, all have 777. Strong's Greek and Hebrew numbers for 770, 77, 700, 777, uh, anything that just about that you could look at for seven. If you string these words together, uh, both the, the Greek and the Hebrew in Strong's, what you come up with is words such as watching freely without expense, that's, I see that as grace, to please, earthy, fasting, to destroy, and perish. It all, almost seems to describe the present condition or the activity of awakened believers in coming judgment when we look at 7, 70, 77, 700, and 777 in both Strong's uh, Hebrew and Greek. Now, I won't bother reading through this, but this is the one of the slides I put up uh, quite some time ago about Donald Trump in sevens. Um, Skipping to kind of to the bottom of this, you know, it is, um, there are some more recent, uh, more recent uh, 
connections to Donald Trump. Uh, 777 days from Trump's inauguration uh, to the end of 5778. Uh, when the spiritual new year 5779 begins, that's March 8, 2019. And uh, if you uh, have followed this channel for any length of time, you know that we are dead set on the fact that there are a specific number of days along a timeline. Um, that those days would be shortened is a reference that w I believe, uh, wholeheartedly believe, that that's not saying that God is, well, it's not saying that God is saying, well, I gave you the, the number of days along a timeline, but I didn't really mean what I said. Uh, it's a matter of interpretation. And we take that to mean that if those days were to go on beyond that, that no flesh would be saved. So there are 26, 25 days on any timeline from rapture to kingdom. It is 26, 25 days exact from March 8, 2019 to May 14, 2026, that would be the kingdom, which happens to be Israel's 78th birthday. It's just how the math works out. And the same day, according to Genesis 8:14, that the earth was dry when God's judgment of the flood was complete. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't help but see that as intriguing. So if nothing happens December 21, don't lose hope. We've still got much ahead of us here. 70 years, 7 months, 7 days from Israel's rebirth to the first day of winter, December 21, 2018. It's also 700 days, Trump's inauguration, January 20th, 2017, to the first day of winter, December 21, 2018. And it is 777 days from Trump's inauguration to the end of 5778, March 8, 2019. I was looking at Trump sevens and, and looking at all the associations of 770, 77, 777, 5777, 7717, and 5779. And what I saw were relationships to days, weeks, months, years, electoral votes, the great American solar eclipse, Putin, wealth, Israel, military, as in military strikes against Syria, uh, Hebrew years, and who, who knows what else is associated with it that, that we haven't seen. Now look, just for, I did this last night, I wanted to show you this, just let's contrast Obama, just something I thought was interesting. You know, since we have all of those sevens associated with Trump, I just wanted to see how the, you know, the same thing matched up with Barack Obama. His birthday, August 4, 1961. Age upon inauguration, 47 years, 5 months, 16 days. He was born 13 years, 2 months, 21 days from Israel's rebirth. Uh, inauguration, his inauguration to winter solstice, 9 years, 11 months, 1 day. Inauguration to the end of 5778, 10 years, 1 month, 16 days. His birth to the Revelation 12 sign, 56 years, 1 month, 19 days. His birth to the Great American Solar Eclipse, 56 years, 18 days. Between Trump's birthday and his, 15 years, 1 month, 22 days. The numbers are all over the place. I just I see no numbers bearing any significance. I didn't even see 1-7 in all the numbers I looked at when it came to Barack Obama, except the 1-7 contained in his age at his inauguration, just that one one digit. Compared to Trump, who's literally bombarded with the number seven. I mean, there is a mystery surrounding this president and his relation to the number seven. And I don't claim to hold the key to that mystery, but what I do know is that nothing occurs by accident in a world ruled and governed by divine providence. I point you to Romans 13, 1, which states, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Why should it be necessary for there to be a specific verse in the Bible revealing God's use of numbers and their relative meanings when the Bible as a whole reveals that fact without question and in abundance? 
2019 will mark 80 years since Hitler invaded Poland in 1939, beginning World War II. Now, something interesting about Genesis 1-1, uh, you see seven all over the place. The first chapter, first verse of the Word of God. God is, has planted an order in the world and, and in his word. The number seven recurs throughout the Bible as in, as in the numbers of, 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 of the days of creation, the, the days of a week, the number of biblical feasts, and so on and so forth. Both the Old and the New Testaments, they teem with numeric patterns of seven. No writings of other religions display this phenomenon. Only God could have created such a pattern. It could not have occurred by accident or by chance. We don't worship the God of chance. It is further evidence of, of the seal or signature of God. It is proof of divine authorship. That's what it is. Now, looking at Genesis 1-1, there are seven words in the verse. There are 28 letters divisible by seven. The first three words have 14 letters divisible by seven. The last four words have 14 letters divisible by seven. The third and fifth words have seven letters. The sixth and seventh words have seven letters. The key words, God, heaven, and earth, have 14 letters. That's divisible by seven. The remaining words have 14 letters divisible by seven. The middle word is the shortest with two letters. However, the words to the right and the left of it, they have five letters each combining uh, with either would give seven. Something interesting also about Jesus' birth. I know that date is often disputed. We here at blessedhopeforever.com are, are camping heavily on the fact that his his birth was 9-11. That's amazing in and of itself. But when we count from his birth, his birthday, 9-11-2018, to the day before winter solstice, 12-20, or the days in between his birth and winter solstice, we're looking at 100 days. And 100 in the Bible signifies testimony, law, responsibility, and the completeness of order. 100 is 10 times 10. Something else interesting about 222, Israel turned 70, May 14, 2018. If we count the days from Israel turning 70 to the winter solstice, December 21st, 2018, we get 222 days, 222. We know Jesus is a, the numerical value of Jesus in the Greek is 888. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. 222 times three is 888. Just found that interesting. Well, something about wars here. If you go down through the wars, the War of 1812 uh, lasted three years, Me Mexican-American War, two years, American Civil War, four years, Spanish-American War, one year, World War I, four years, World War II, six years, Korean War, three years, Vietnam War, 16 years. And then the Gulf War, 1990 to the present year, 2018. 28 years and it'll it'll only end by a future date to be set by law or presidential proclamation dick cheney said in 2004 the battle like the cold war could last generations so here's my point the return of jesus christ is near therefore the wars described for the end times in the bible the Psalm 83 war, the Gog Magog war, the invasion of Israel by the Antichrist will be but campaigns fought within the current war that we are now in. I just want you to let that sink in for a moment. We're looking at the revived Ottoman Empire, deadly wound that is healed. Uh, Jerusalem is a place of assembly for non Jews, the great American solar eclipse, Revelation 12 sign. Trump visiting the Western Wall, the UN Jerusalem vote, the, the move of the embassy to Jerusalem, the end gathering of exiles, the increase in lawlessness, globalism, the push for the new world order, the rise in anti-Semitism, and the persecution of Christians, 
the increasing Sunni-Shia divide, Iran versus Saudi Arabia, the news lately of Saudi Arabia, uh, near destruction of Damascus, the river Euphrates drying up, U.S., Russia, China, North Korea tensions, the reestablishment of the Davidic dynasty, ongoing plans to rebuild the third temple, the altar dedication here recently, the global cultural war, mass migration, political correctness, calling good evil and evil good, the Islamic Antichrist system, the mark of the beast. These are proofs that we are in the final moments. So I'm hopeful for December 21st. I really am. I love you all. I truly do. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.